can be Duke. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So with that, we are moving uh, to a bit different perspective. Uh, we will have this time an overview of the kind of market point of view uh, by uh, Michael Cortez, a partner in Wild uh, Ventures. And he would be uh, kind of trying to demystify recession and asking, have security, uh, cybersecurity changed between vendors and companies? The dynamic of it, has it changed? So it's a different perspective on embracing uncertainty. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dorit, for the introduction. I really appreciate it. And really quickly, before I get started, uh, I want to say thank you to my amazing team that helped me prepare for this today and uh, the team here at the university that helped set this up. I mean, it's really an incredible exercise in logistics. So thank you all for everything you're doing to help this run so smoothly today. Good morning, and thanks for joining me. Uh, I know a lot of you have traveled from quite a ways to be here, and having been to Cyber Week for the past several years myself, I know how hectic this week can be, and it's really an honor and a privilege that you all would choose to spend some of your time this week here with me this morning, so thank you sincerely. Very briefly about myself. One second. Sorry, when you're colorblind, the red-green thing doesn't work quite as well. Here we go. Oh, and I didn't realize how big this was gonna be either. I think maybe some things weren't, weren't meant for high definition, but I'm not gonna spend too long on this slide anyway, so it's okay. Really quickly about myself. So I'm a partner at Wild Ventures. Wild Ventures is a seed stage uh, cybersecurity fund. If you're unfamiliar, we, uh, we have offices in New York, in Tel Aviv, and in San Francisco. We're really focused, I think, quite simply on one thing, uh, which is really to help the most talented women and men in the Israeli cybersecurity ecosystem build large companies that are trying to solve the world's biggest problems in cybersecurity. I'm gonna be delving into a topic that I think, frankly, when you all heard this, you might have been thinking of the recession, you know, I'm kinda of tired of talking about that, it's kind of a depressing topic, but I'm gonna be trying to put a little bit of a different spin on it today. So I'm gonna be talking to you not just about, you know, broader macro trends, although if anybody wants to grab me afterwards, I'm, I'm more than happy to dive into that a little bit more. But what I'm really gonna be trying to do is, is demystify a little bit, you know, some of the trends we've been seeing through a few different lenses, specifically the investor lens, uh, the CISO lens, and the cybersecurity startup lens. I'm gonna explore how the market pullbacks have really impacted the dynamics between vendors, their customers, and their investors. And, you know, I really think that as the threat landscape continues to evolve, it's really imperative that we understand how these groups, different perspectives and priorities have changed, and I really think it's in our collective best interest. So we're gonna start by looking at the state of cybersecurity market in a couple of different regions. On the left-hand side here, side here, you'll see the Israeli cybersecurity market. And I think what you'll notice when you look at some of this data is that you know, while the macroeconomic trends have certainly led to a slowdown in technology investment, uh, the Israeli cybersecurity market's actually been remarkably resilient. And I think it's really a testament to the fact that the Israeli cybersecurity market continues to grow and adapt this country truly has an expertise in, uh, in cutting edge technology and, and really a robust tradition of building an ecosystem around its founders. And I think that's really led to the ability to stay agile and stay relevant. But on the other hand, you know, on the right hand side, you'll see in the North American market, we've seen a much starker slowdown in venture funding. So venture investments were down significantly in 2022, as you'll see in both of those charts, particularly in early stage investment. And for the sake of this data, I'm talking specifically about Series A and Series B rounds here. You know, I think this can be attributed to a number of factors. I think, you know, anytime there's write downs and losses, investors take a second look at their investment strategies. Anytime there's macroeconomic uncertainty, I think investors tend to be a little bit more cautious when they're funding emerging technologies. But, you know, the flip side of that is, well, you know, of course, this is a challenge for, for North American startups and companies building businesses in the United States. I think the flip side of that is that it also really encourages a more prudent uses of resources and capital. And I think over time that really is gonna foster you know, longer term innovation and sustainability. Really quickly turning our attention to uh, founders, founders of security startups. So a couple of interesting trends that we see here. On the one hand, I think we're seeing that founders are choosing to stay in stealth mode longer than they have in the past. 
uh, really delaying the public disclosure of what they're doing with their building, their products and strategies. And I think that this strategic approach is really allowing them to kind of refine their offerings and really build a stronger foundation before they're entering the market. By remaining in stealth mode, startups can do more thorough research, more thorough product development, and more thorough validation with potential customers before they have to really face the scrutiny of being a public company. Uh, and I think that you know this approach ensures that when they do emerge, they're really equipped with a better defined value proposition and hopefully setting themselves up for a higher likelihood of success over time. But on the other hand, we're seeing that you know existing vendors are facing a lot of challenges right now, raising follow-on rounds. And this is, I think, indicative of that shift that I was just discussing in investor sentiment and really that more cautious approach to funding. The public comps have traded lower, right? It's no secret. And we've seen a compression in the revenue, revenue multiples for follow-ons as well. Uh, investors are more discerning, particularly those closer to the public markets. And they're focused not only on you know, how innovative a startup's technology is uh, and, and funding growth at any price, the way we saw maybe in 2020 and 2021, but really focused on commercial viability and you know, the potential for long-term sustainability of the business. So an increasing focus on efficiency metrics, for example. And really to secure follow-on funding, I think my advice would be, you, know, you really have to focus on demonstrating a solid and really satisfied customer base Things like gross retention, uh, net retention are really important. Making sure that customers are really validating that what you're doing is solving a real problem for them. And then really a repeatable sales motion with a strong pipeline. Now that's not easy because in today's landscape, uh, CISOs are placing more emphasis on return on investment than I think ever before. You know, we surveyed our network over the past couple of months. And what I heard from people is, you know, they really recognize the need to justify every single cybersecurity investment that they're making with really measurable business value. CISOs are really focused on, as you can see uh, in the chart on the left-hand slide, consolidating tools, automating traditionally manual tasks, uh, trying to maximize efficiency. They're really looking for solutions that can kind of streamline their operations and reduce costs for the business, as well as, of course, improving the overall cybersecurity posture. But I think the more interesting thing when I'm talking to people is they're tending to run the security teams more like a business unit as part of the broader organization. And I'm hearing that there's a greater involvement from CFOs and CIOs in purchasing decisions than really I've ever seen before in the past. And I think this collaboration you know, between the different departments is really essential in ensuring that the cybersecurity initiatives are really aligned with the broader business goals. So I think it's overall a positive thing. But I think the thing I would say, you know, if you're a vendor, if you're, if you're a startup, is you really have to empower the CISO uh, in that role. You have to empower them to become you know, a champion for what you're doing within that organization and really give them the tools and the language, you know, the data and the insights to really communicate that ROI to their internal stakeholders, critically important. Uh, on the right-hand side, you know, the good news is that while CISOs are maybe a little bit more discerning in, in their evaluations, we're hearing that they're still open to meeting new vendors as you can see on the right-hand side. So they're operating with a different set of rules, but they're still open to trying out new technologies. And, but the, the, the caveat, again, going back to what I just said, communicating that ROI is really, really critical and empowering them to be champions and giving them that language to talk about what you're doing to, to other stakeholders within the organization. And just a few more thoughts as I kind of wrap up here today. So number one for CISOs, you know, I would encourage you humbly to leverage investors as filtering mechanisms when you're evaluating new vendors. If any of you were at the recent RSA conference in San Francisco or have been to Black Hat or InfoSec in Europe or other conferences recently, I think you'll see that there's an absolute glut of cybersecurity solutions out there. And I think the trend that you're seeing with CISOs around tool consolidation, uh, that's almost inevitable. And so hopefully investors can really provide valuable insight and guidance yeah, really helping ensure that you're making informed decisions and the decisions you are making are really aligned with your organization's overall business objectives. For founders, be methodical. So adopt a methodical approach. You know, invest additional time in refining your products, refining your strategies before coming out of stealth mode. I think it's a prudent approach, particularly in this market. And really take advantage of that stealth mode period that you have uh, to conduct, you know, really thorough uh, market analysis, you know, really talk to customers, build strong partnerships, and really validate that, that what you're doing is solving a real need in a repeatable way. For existing startups, you know, prioritize efficiency. So streamline your operations as best you can. And the advice I give is always ask yourself the need to have versus nice to have question. And I don't mean just in terms of hiring or product development, but really in terms of both. You know, so when you're thinking about your hiring plan, adding to your burn rate, 
you know, adding people to your team, do you really need that role? Is there a better way to allocate efficiency, uh, allocate uh, resources that you already have efficiently? And when you're thinking about product, you know, are you really going to spend dev cycles on something that's not going to be driving revenue in the near term and something that really hasn't been validated by customer conversations? So keep that in mind as well. And for investors, you know, again, I would kind of humbly say, try to define your value add. So for investors that do want to lean in um, in this market, you know, really be able to articulate that beyond just providing capital, you know, you should be able to leverage your experience, having gone through multiple economic cycles in the past, to really offer, you know, not just money, but strategic guidance, uh, industry connections, and of course, mentorship as well. So the last thing I'll say really quickly is, you know, that while the dynamics between cybersecurity vendors, investors, and customers have shifted in the past 18 months, certainly, I think it's really essential that we recognize collectively that while these broader challenges exist, there are also really opportunities for continued growth and innovation. And I think that if each of these three groups that I just talked about, you know, cybersecurity founders, investors, and CISOs, can really better understand how these points of views and priorities have changed over time, I think we can really navigate this in a successful way and uh, continue to build a really resilient cybersecurity ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.